Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to another one of my cake videos. In this recipe, I'll be showing you how we make our delicious apple sponge, or you may know that as Eve's pudding. I'll also be showing how we make up our cinnamon and nutmeg spice mix, which is great for all sorts of dessert dishes. Now this is a very simple but fantastic dessert to make. You can serve it hot or cold. We normally serve it straight from the oven along with piping hot custard. And that's the way I'll be demonstrating it in this video. And here's a list of the simple ingredients needed to follow along with this recipe. There'll also be a list in the description box below the video. And this is the baking tin I'll be using for this recipe. The dimensions of the tin are on screen. And as I'll be spooning the cake out of the tin when it's finished, there's no need to grease the tin on this occasion. Right, I'm starting by peeling, coring and dicing 900 grams, that's two pounds of apples. I'm using these sweet and juicy gala apples, but you can use any variety you like. These apple slice and corers are a great time saver when doing a lot of apples, but not essential. And by the way, I'm not being sponsored. And to be honest, I haven't a clue where we bought it. But it's definitely a handy tool to have around the kitchen. And to prevent the apples from turning brown, coat them in a couple of tablespoons of lemon juice. Now I came up a little short with my apples so I peeled and chopped another one off camera. So in total I used six medium sized apples. And to give you a better idea of the finished weight of apples, it's 800 grams, that's one and three quarter pounds. Now coat the apple pieces with one level teaspoon of ground cinnamon and one level teaspoon of ground nutmeg. But if you want to make up your own cinnamon and nutmeg spice mix, this is how I make mine and it lasts me for months. Now this is just the first of three batches because it's all my little spice grinder can handle at one time. But I'll just let you watch how it's done. But to make up the quantity I'm making, you'll need six nutmegs, three cinnamon sticks and nine tablespoons of sugar. And that's all three batches made up. I use this a lot in my recipes. I use it in apple pies, homemade rice pudding, cinnamon rolls, I even put a teaspoon in my porridge. It's also fantastic if you put just half a teaspoon in a mug of hot milk just before bedtime and you'll be off into the land of nod before you know it. <laughs> it works for me anyway. Right, I'm adding two heaped teaspoons of my mix onto the apples because my spice mix is diluted with the sugar so I can put more on. But if you're using the bought pure ground spices, just add one level teaspoon of each. And give it a good mix and get it into the bottom of the baking tin and even it all out. Thank you. 
All I've got to do now is add the cubes of butter as shown. Now the butter adds flavour and it also helps stop the apples from drying out in the oven. Right, that's that part out of the way, that wasn't too difficult. Now I'll put that aside and get on with making the sponge mix. Time to preheat the oven to 170 degrees Celsius, that's 338 Fahrenheit or gas mark 4. I'm setting mine to 150 Celsius as my oven's fan assisted and it runs about 20 degrees hotter than indicated on the dial. I'll start by adding the eggs to a bowl and give them a good beat. Next ingredient is the oil and I'll whisk that in too. The last wet ingredient is the teaspoon of vanilla extract. Followed by the sugar and give that a good whisk. Finally, I'll sift in the flour, baking powder and salt. If you're using plain or all-purpose flour, add an extra one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And that's baking powder and not baking soda. Any lumps that's left, just push them through with your fingers. All I've got to do now is give that a good whisk until it's nice and smooth. And that's all there is to it. This has got to be the easiest sponge you could ever make. And it's absolutely ideal for dessert cakes. And what I mean by that, it's a cake that you would normally put custard on. The likes of treacle pudding or my jam and coconut or chocolate cake. If you're looking for a recipe using a more traditional method using butter instead of oil, try my Victoria sponge and lemon drizzle recipes. I'll leave a link in the description box below to those particular videos. OK, once the batter is smooth, pour it over the apples and level it off with the back of a spoon as shown. Right, now I'll get it into the preheated oven which is set to 170 degrees Celsius, that's 338 Fahrenheit or gas mark 4. And I'll set the timer for 50 minutes. OK, there's only a couple of minutes left on the timer so I'll heat up the custard so I can serve up a portion as soon as the cake comes out of the oven. I'm just going to use this carton of custard for now, but I will be making a posher homemade custard in a future video, as soon as I save up the money for a vanilla pod, which for some reason has just gone through the roof at the moment. £4 I wanted for one vanilla pod in my local supermarket, that's about $6. And this whole carton only cost £1 and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, so I'm keeping it real for you folks out there. Once the time's up, I'll check the cake with a cocktail stick. If it comes out clean, it's done. And mine is done, so I'll get it out of the oven and onto a heatproof surface. And I'll serve up a portion while it's still piping hot.
The smell of the apples and spices coming from it is absolutely amazing. Right, I'll just move the tin out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. And by the way, don't move the hot tin with your bare hands like I've just done. My fingers are used to the heat. Okay, I'll just get some hot custard on it and give it a try. But I just know this is going to be good. Everything about these last few dessert cakes I've been making remind me of my school days many, many years ago. And indeed, many of you have mentioned that in the comments. And this is certainly no different. And it was always one of our customers' favourites. And guess what? It's absolutely delicious. And yes, it definitely gets a thumbs up. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in the kitchen and bye for now.